It's been over five months since Israel's genocidal war on Gaza and the Palestinian people began. Tens of thousands of Palestinians have been massacred and hundreds more die daily. Millions more are homeless and at risk of death from starvation, exhaustion and disease. And every day we hear of more horrors and there is no end in sight. But across the world, and in particular in the same Western capitals that bankroll this war and provide diplomatic cover for Israel, we have seen millions of people pour out onto the streets, calling for a ceasefire and for a free Palestine. These actions have been many and varied. Pro-Israel businesses have been boycotted and weapons manufacturers sending arms to Israel have been blockaded. But for 25-year-old Aaron Bushnell, an active duty member of the US Air Force and a resident of San Antonio, Texas did was something else entirely. Bush now. I am an active duty member of the United States Air Force and I will no longer be complicit in genocide. I'm about to engage in an extreme act of protest but compared to what people have been experiencing in Palestine at the hands of their colonizers. Before ending his life in protest against the US government, his government's support of Israel's genocide, Aaron Bushnell reportedly sent a message to media outlets saying, Today, I am planning to engage in an extreme act of protest against the genocide of the Palestinian people. On Facebook, Sunday morning, he also wrote, Many of us like to ask ourselves, what would I do if I was alive during slavery or in the Jim Crow South or apartheid? What would I do if my country was committing genocide? The answer is, you're doing it right now. Here's the thing, this isn't the first attempt at self-immolation when it comes to Palestinian protests. In December last year, a protester set themselves on fire outside the Israeli consulate in Atlanta, Georgia. They survived with severe burns, but to this date, there's been no follow-up on the story. We don't even know his or her name or how they are because this story, like so many others that go against the prevailing pro-Israeli narrative in the Western media, was buried. Aaron's actions bring to mind others who have given their lives as a protest for a cause they believed in or in protest against an action they could not bring themselves to commit. People like Franz Jägerstatter, have you ever heard of him? He was an Austrian Roman Catholic who refused to serve in the Nazi army in World War II, saying that it was against his moral and religious beliefs. Despite being sentenced to death, despite being threatened and having his family threatened, he refused to serve the genocidal regime that ruled him and was executed for his moral beliefs. Like Aaron, he gave his life for a cause he believed in. Aaron also reminds us of Thich Quang Duc, a Buddhist monk who set himself on fire in 1963 as a protest against the anti-Buddhist policies of the South Vietnamese government. His picture made history and the man who took that picture, Malcolm Brown, won the World Press Photo of the Year. No less a person than John F. Kennedy said of this one photograph, no news picture in history has generated so much emotion around the world as that one. Will Aaron's picture be treated the same? Uh, I don't think so, at least not by Western media, because, hey, well, let's take a look at these headlines. Airman sets himself on fire. Airman sets himself on fire. Nowhere do they mention why this young, healthy, sane man would take such an action. Nowhere in the headline is there a mention of Palestine, a mention of Gaza, a mention of genocide, or a mention of Israel, because as we all know, that's forbidden. Um, but that's nothing. Take a look at this story by NPR. And it says, and I quote, NPR was not able to ident independently verify the man's motives. Really NPR? Because the man literally said it himself. He literally shouted free Palestine with his dying breath. And you, a news organization, can't verify the man's motives? Okay, let's talk about motives. Is this a motive, perhaps? Earlier this year, The Intercept, a prime investigative website, reported that the information used to conduct airstrikes and long-range artillery weapons is being provided to Israel by the United States of America. They obtained a document through the Freedom of Information Act, 
which strongly suggests that the US Air Force has been sending officers, and this is mandatory, you can't refuse it, specializing in this exact form of intelligence to Israel as early as November. Was that in Adam's mind? Was he one of those who was supposed to be sent to Israel? Maybe. We don't know for sure. But what we do know for sure is that a campaign is starting depicting Aaron as some crazy guy with a history of mental illness. I mean, it's not about to start. It's, it's already started. I mean, just take a look at this Newsweek headline. A Bushnell death report reveals police call about mental distress. Now, pause here for a second. Imagine you're reading this as most of us do. 90% of us don't really click the story. It's the headline that makes an impact as you scroll past on your app, as you scroll past on Twitter, as you scroll past, in this case, Newsweek's website, you will hear mental distress. And this headline, it implies that he had pre-existing mental distress. Oh, he was a crazy guy. But when you actually read the article, it turns out that the police call in question is the call about him setting himself on fire. And then there's hallowed Washington Post, WAPO itself. Check out this headline. Airman who sets self on fire, again, why WAPO? Airman who sets himself on fire, grew up on a religious compound, had anarchist past. So yeah, there you go. I mean, it's like paint by numbers with these guys, man. They're so predictable. They're going to now try and paint Aaron as a crazy person. They're going to say he was a radical, religious fanatic, was depressed, was insane, but he wasn't. You know what's insane? Insane is pointing a gun at a dead person, a dying person who has set himself on fire. That's peak America, ladies and gentlemen. Insane is gleefully funding and arming a genocide while claiming to protect human rights and life. Aaron, he was just a sane, moral human being in an insane, increasingly insane, immoral and inhumane world. And if you didn't know that, now you know.